What is up, everypony? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are looking at another My Little Pony Horror AU. This one was highly requested quite a bit ago. I remember I got a lot of comments to look at this, and I'm finally getting around to it. Today, we are taking a look at the cookie virus. I'm pretty excited to get into this. I think it's going to be a pretty cool looking story. I love the artwork from what I can see so far. So we're going to take a look at the pin video first because this one has like information that we need and that's why it's pinned because I think that's the beginning of the story and then we go down to where it starts. So before I jump into this, I just want to read the description, right? Uh, Anxiety Monster, the creator, said, I love the MLP virus slideshows. I wanted to hop on this before the trend dies. As you probably guessed, this is based off the episode 28 Pranks Later. Rainbow Dash just wanted to pull off a harmless prank but ended up putting all of Equestria in danger. Oh dear. So it is just like that one episode. I don't think I got to that episode yet watching MLP because I've been quite inconsistent with watching it and I'm only on season two so far. But I will get to that episode down the line and I'll have a better like idea of it. But I'm just going to go off of the fact that it says it's based off of the episode and we're just going to go from there. So the cookie virus stages. Journal entries by, but the name is scratched out in blood. The beginning pony. Pony is somewhat sane, but very hungry. They crave the cookies they were infected with more than anything, and are desperate to do anything for more. Earliest sign is rainbow muzzle and permanent smile slash frown. It appears as if they're going blind, blown pupils, and they have a rainbow muzzle. The second stage. Pony's sanity is declining. They can still speak, but cannot stop thinking about their hunger. They are extremely desperate for cookies. So much so, they start chasing down and eating anything living. In case they have cookies in their stomach, their mouths and their stomach begin to rot. Hair and feathers begin to fall out. Stretching induces skin tearing, stretching mouth, and losing feathers and hair. Holy shit. They did my girl Twilight dirty. Third stage. Sanity is gone. They can no longer speak and only make desperate sounds of hunger and anger. They begin eating ponies hoping for a sweet taste to satisfy their needs. Their mouths are starting to stretch or droop, depending on if they mutated with a smile or a frown. They are dangerously skinny. Different parts of their body begin to stretch and change. Depending on the pony, manes and tail hair have shed. Pony is unrecognizable besides the cutie mark. Sunken eyes or blind, incredible sense of smell, skinny and hungry, and mutations begin different for every pony. In this case, stretching limbs. Damn, that's actually terrifying. If I seen that in an alleyway, I'd run the other direction. My god. And it appears that there, as if there's a final stage, but it's all scratched out. You can't really read it too well. You can only read Run Away. But if we take a look at the outline in the back here, it looks like they have, like, branches growing out of them. And I would assume these are the wings, and they look completely featherless. And it looks like just... Oh man, that's terrifying. All right. Now we're gonna move on to the first episode. Let's get this started, shall we? Pretty excited for this. Rainbow Dash's journal, surviving the cookie virus. This is all my fault. I'm not the type to keep a journal, but Rarity says writing down your thoughts can help your nerves and keep your thoughts straight. Right now, me, Applejack, Rarity, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders are hiding out in the Sweet Apple Acres barn. We've barricaded all of the windows and doors but we can't stay here forever. We're all fine, just pretty shaken up. Applejack is looting the barn, finding anything we can eat or use as weapons. She refuses to look at me or even speak to me. Rarity is panicking, that's obvious, but she's trying to calm her sister down. Poor Sweetie Belle isn't taking any of this well. She hasn't stopped crying since we got here. Apple Bloom is also trying to comfort Sweetie Belle and help AJ. But Scootaloo also isn't speaking to me. I don't really blame her. We're all that's left in Ponyville as far as I know. We gave everyone those horrible cookies. All I can see when I close my eyes is Twilight's twisted grin and Fluttershy's drooping frown. I don't want to think about them. Pinkie Pie was the first pony who ate a cookie, but I haven't seen her anywhere. She wasn't at Sugar Cube Corner with the poor cake family. Those little cake twins. What have I done? Oh man, Rainbow, what have you done? That's awful. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, they did my girl Flutter's dirty. Anyway, 
The Cookie Virus Stages, Frowning Ponies Edition, journal entries by something. But if we look very closely here, it looks like the word hooves is shown. So perhaps the, the ponies are being overlooked by Dr. Hooves, perhaps? That's the only assumption I have. Beginning stage. Same as Smiling Pony, Pony still has some sanity, but is very hungry. All they talk about is how much they need the cookies they were infected with. Earliest sign of infection is rainbow muzzle and permanent smile slash frown. Permanently drooping jaw. Unlike Smiling Pony, pupils are dilated and eyes begin to sink. Oh, Jesus. Second stage. Pony's sanity is declining. They can still speak, but all they seem to mumble is the word cookies. They are extremely desperate for cookies. So much so, they start chasing down anything living. At this stage, they often find and eat small animals. Though if confronted by a pony, they won't hesitate to attack. Their mouths and stomach begin to rot. Hair and feathers begin to fall out. Sunken eyes? Possibly blind? Drooping jaw induces skin tearing. Oh my god. That's worse than the smiling pony. Third stage. Sanity is completely gone. Pony can no longer speak and can only make desperate sounds of hunger and anger. They begin strictly targeting ponies, hoping for a sweet taste to satisfy their needs. Unlike Twilight Sparkle, who I observed in the past, Fluttershy seems to droop downward instead of growing taller. Do all frowning ponies mutate this way? I am unsure, but it's too dangerous for me to find out. Mane and feathers have completely shed. Pony is left unrecognizable besides the cutie mark. Eyes? She keeps staring at me. Drooping slash stretching neck? Unhinged jaw? Teeth? Doesn't look like they have any teeth. This one is also scratched out. I can see Flutter staring at me. That's actually terrifying. But you can actually read a bit of this one here. It says, final stage. Pony is beyond recognizable. I think they meant to put unrecognizable, but that's just me. Can't even call it a pony anymore. Blind, but has incredible hearing and sense of smell. Breathing is rapid and rigid. It is very hungry. It will lunge and attack at any noise or scent of blood. Stay indoors and lock the doors. Going outside is guaranteed death. I think she can see me. Can she see me? She sees me. Damn, they did my girl Flutters really dirty. Man, every AU is doing my girl Flutters dirty as hell. That's so sad. Rainbow Dash's Journal, Surviving the Cookie Virus, Part 2. We camped out in the barn for only two nights. Before we were spotted... We heard an awful groaning sound and I took a peek outside. A mangled and grinning Granny Smith was slowly approaching the barn. Luckily she was far away enough for us to have time to pack up a wagon of supplies and book it out the back door. AJ and I pulled the cart with every pony inside, but even with two of the fastest ponies in Ponyville, running in sync, an awful thudding sound was echoing behind us. Granny was chasing us. Apple Bloom started crying. That's my granny. She's family. We have to help her. I took a look at AJ, and she had tears in her eyes. That ain't our family no more, Sugar Cube. We didn't know where we were headed, but it had to be away from Granny and away from Ponyville. But we were suddenly cut off by a creature jumping in front of us. It was hard to tell who it was in the moment, but from Applejack's guttural scream, I'm positive it was Big Macintosh, or it used to be at least. In an effort to get away from him, AJ and I took a violent swerve right, tumbling down a steep hill. It was a really hard fall. Everyone fell out of the wagon and the thing crashed us into a big apple tree. In the mess, a chunk of the wagon crushed my wing and another fell on AJ's leg. My wing hurt like hell, and it was all twisted in ways it shouldn't be. But there was no time to shake it off. We had to go. Rarity levitated all the supplies she could, and AJ and I carried the Cutie Mark Crusaders on our backs. AJ was limping harshly with every step, but she was in such a blind panic, I'm not sure she even realized she was hurt. AJ led the way and showed us to a little wooden shed in the middle of the orchard. AJ said that part of the orchard was so far from the barn, they built a little shed to hold extra supplies. It was small and uncomfortable. Everyone pressed up against either a basket or a shovel. But AJ reassured us it was only until morning, and when those things were gone, her family. I could barely sleep. My wing felt broken, and I'm sure Applejack isn't in any better condition. 
Plus, I couldn't get Granny's face out of my head or Apple Bloom's cries. So I decided to be lookout, staying awake and listening or watching for anything close by. I couldn't hear anything all night. Not hoof steps, heavy breathing, or anything. While I'm sure we were all safe, I couldn't help the feeling that we were being watched. Now if we look at the window here in the little slide, it shows a pink body with blue eyes. So that could be Pinky. And you can see a little bit of yellow, so I'm guessing that's a part of the rainbow mouse. So I'm guessing Pinky is infected. Their eyes also look quite small, so maybe she's like a frowning one, but I'm not sure. Rainbow Dash's Journal, Surviving the Cookie Virus, Part 3. Although in the description it says Part 5. I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up to Rarity nudging my shoulder. It was morning and everyone was awake. Applejack said it was okay to leave. We each grabbed the basket and loaded them with apples. For the time being, they'd be our only food source. I had barely picked five apples when I heard Rarity shriek. Without much thinking, I ran to her. She was holding up a magical gem shield and pushing back what used to be Big Macintosh. He was thrashing and gargling and Rarity's magic was fading. What should I do? What could I do? Before I could act, some pony lunged into the scene, whipping out a powerful flashlight and shining it into Big Mac's eyes. Eye sockets? Big Mac howled and took a few dizzy steps away. The pony yelled, get the crusaders and follow me. Now if we take a look over here, it looks as if Pinky came back, but it's actually Pink Amina. The, the three of us ran, AJ being the only one still carrying her apple basket. Rarity and I carried the Crusaders. In a blind panic, we followed this pony until we were out of the until we were out of breath and sure we weren't followed. We only stopped when AJ collapsed to the ground. The pony turning to help her, and that's when I got a good look at her. Pinkie Pie. So she's not really like fully infected, but she does have the rainbow mouth thing if you take a look at her. Pinkie. I jumped on Pinkie for a hug, but she shoved me away. This confused me because I've never been denied a hug from Pinkie Pie. But she did look a lot different. As she helped AJ to her hooves, I got a good look at her. She had her hair down, multiple scars on her body, and her mouth was rainbow. I'm not infected, Pinky said, and I'm bunkering at Fluttershy's cottage. Let's go. AJ ended up ditching the apple basket, and Pinky carried her on her back. Pinkie Pie led us to Fluttershy's. Fluttershy's? Oh, darling, does this mean... Rarity seemed overjoyed, but Pinky sighed. No. She's gone too, but she's also not home, hasn't been for a while. Her cottage is far away enough from Ponyville that I've been bunking there for a while now. When we got to Fluttershy's, it was just as Pinky said, empty, not even a single animal, but there were lots of bloodied chunks on the ground of what used to be Shy's critters. I wonder if Fluttershy did this. Pinky led us to Fluttershy's basement and grabbed a medical kit bandaging up AJ's leg before doing the same to my wing. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if you'll heal right. I'm sorry. It's cool, I replied. My wing hurt, but it felt better in the sling. Now I need answers from you, Pinky. We can't keep secrets during this. What happened to you? Are you infected? Pinky looked around the room and sighed. Can I speak to you alone? I wanted to argue, to tell her that whatever she had to say, she could say it to every pony, but the way she spoke was suddenly soft. She sounded on the verge of tears, so I agreed. We made our way upstairs and quietly looked through all of the windows to make sure we hadn't been followed. Pinky sighed and turned to me, tears welling up in her eyes. Oh, Rainbow, this is all my fault. Ah, uh, I think we already said it was Rainbow's fault, Pinky. Rainbow Dash's journal, trigger warning, character death. Surviving the character or the cookie virus, but it says character death here, so I'm guessing a character dies. I wonder who does. I was shocked. Pinky just admitted that the virus was entirely her fault, but I thought it was my own. No, Pinky, it can't be. I was the one who fed everyone those cookies. I fed everyone the cookies. Tears were streaming down Pinky's face, so I could tell this wasn't a time to argue. Even if I wanted to take all the blame, she continued to explain herself. I'm sure Applejack told you by now, but this was all meant to be a terrible prank on you. To one-up you, and it was all my idea. When you came to me with the idea to prank the whole town with these rainbow joke cookies, 
I came up with the idea to prank you into thinking we all became zombies from eating them. But after you fed me that first cookie, I felt odd. It's hard to explain what the feeling was, but more than anything I felt ill. But I was too determined to get you back. This was the perfect chance. I forced everyone in Ponyville to buy at least one or two boxes of cookies, even convincing those who didn't want the cookies to participate. I ignored how sick those cookies made me in order to one-up you, and now I've murdered everyone in Ponyville. Pinky crumpled to the floor. Despite her apology, I still didn't believe she had anything to apologize for. I knelt down and wrapped her in my good wing. Oh, Pinky, none of this is your fault. It's not like you made those cookies. There's no way you could have known. Pinky sniffled. Right, but I have been wondering, what did you put in those cookies that made ponies become this? I blinked at Pinky. I didn't make the cookies. Don't you remember? I said I special ordered them from someone in Canterlot. I didn't want to order them from Sugar Cube Corner or else it'd ruin the prank. Pinky perked up at that. Confusion now on her face. But if you didn't make those cookies, who did? We were interrupted by a horrible sound outside. Help! Help me! Instinctively, Pinky and I made it back down into Fluttershy's basement. Our sudden entrance startled everyone inside. Scootaloo spoke. What? What happened? Pinky immediately shushed her, and we all listened. Help me, please, she sees me! Applebloom gasped. Th that's a pony! There's a pony out there! Applebloom started running up the stairs before Applejack grabbed her by the tail. Applebloom, no! Applebloom yanked herself away from her sister. Th there's a pony out there who needs help! Our family is gone, Applejack! Just like you said, I have to help any pony I can before it's too late! Before any of us could grab her, Applebloom was running up the stairs and outside. Applebloom, stop! Applejack desperately screamed as her sister ran away. Instantly, every pony was going after Applebloom as the cries for help outside continued. It sounded like a male pony, one I recognized for sure. Applebloom burst out of Fluttershy's cottage and turned the corner to where the cries were coming from. And that was not a pony. That was not a pony? What? Help, help. Oh, it's mimicking. Oh, it's mimicking. Uh-oh. And it killed Apple Bloom. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This music makes this disturbing as hell. No. No, Apple Bloom. No. Oh, that's awful. That's tragic. Oh my god. They got my girl Apple Bloom. No. Oh, that's terrible. This is related to the cookie virus, so we'll look at it. That's just Apple Bloom being mauled. Yeah, got to make an edit of Apple Bloom being mauled. That's that's nice. That's nice. All right, part 7. Oh my god. Rainbow Dash's journal, trigger warning, character death and blood, surviving the cookie virus, part five. Oh no, another character death and blood? No. The scream that came out of Applejack was the worst thing I've ever heard. There was nothing we could do, but watch as Apple Bloom was devoured. Even Pinky was too paralyzed to do anything. Things couldn't get any worse. Then Sweetie Belle started charging the creature. Rarity's scream mimicked Applejack's. Sweetie Belle's horn lit up. I could tell she was trying to blind the creature as Pinky once did, but as soon as her horn lit up, it went out. Oh my god. It bit her fucking head off. Oh my god. Pinky was behind Sweetie in an instant, whipping out her own flashlight and successfully stunning the creature. The horrible, th the horrible thud of Sweetie Belle's lifeless body was such a sickening noise. Pinky didn't say anything, but as soon as the creature was stunned, we were shoved back inside the cottage. Why didn't you do anything? Applejack was screaming at Pinky. Pinky hushed Applejack by putting her hoof over her mouth, but AJ immediately shoved her away. Applejack jumped on Pinky and had her pinned. You could have saved her, both of them. Why didn't you pull out your stupid little flashlight, Dan? Would you keep your voice down? She can hear us from down here. I don't give an apple's tree root about keeping quiet. Our sisters are dead. Skulu started sobbing. I was surprised when she buried her face in my chest as she was clearly angry with me before but I wrapped my wing around her in comfort anyway Rarity stepped in Applejack Pinky is right 
We need to wait until we're safe. What good are we to our sisters if we're also dead? Applejack hesitated before letting Pinky go. The next few hours were silent besides the horrible crunching outside. Once it was silent and we were sure we were alone, Rarity found her voice. So what do we do now? Everyone looked at Pinky. She sighed and kept her head down. Ponyville is done for. And at this rate, the infected will start leaving this town and invading the rest of Equestria. We obviously need help. From the princesses? I spoke up. But Camelot is so far away. There's no way we can leave Ponyville without getting... I trailed off thinking about Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle. Who else do we go to? Besides, you said you ordered those cookies from a bakery in Canterlot, right? If we make it there, maybe we can also find the culprit. Applejack made eye contact with me. The first she had in a long time. Wait, you didn't make those cookies? I shook my head. I could tell Scootaloo was also relieved by the news, though I still felt this was all my fault. Oh my god. But how do we get to Canterlot? The fastest way there is by flight, and my wing is busted. How about by train? Applejack suggested. Oh, I doubt the train still runs through here after all of this. She's right. We all looked at Pinky. The train is the best option. I tried a scraping on the train a few days ago, but it had long been abandoned, and the conductor eaten. If we can get the train running again, we can make it to Canterlot. Epilogue. Pinky's survival tips. Fluttershy. One of the first infected returned to her cottage after days have been missing. She lured out her victims by mimicking the voice of a pony she had eaten. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! That makes sense! So Fluttershy killed Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle. Holy crap! That was Fluttershy? And she was mimicking Dr. Hooves. Holy crap! I have identified this voice to be Dr. Hooves. I suspect the doctor was the reason she was missing but let his guard down and got himself eaten. If you hear a pony calling for help, ignore it and get indoors as soon as you can. Summary. Frowning ponies can mimic the screams of their victims. Damn. Oh my god. That's insane. Alright. Rainbow Dash's journal. Trigger warning. Blood and scary imagery. So this one doesn't have any death in it. That's positive. Surviving the cookie virus. Part 6. We waited for maybe two or three days. It was hard to keep track in the basement. AJ claimed her leg was feeling better though. My wing still felt busted. Most of our time was spent in silence or mourning. AJ and Rarity were still mourning over their sister's gruesome deaths. Rarity often quietly sobbing while AJ would be on the edge and get angry at the smallest things. They had very different mourning processes. Eventually Pinky wanted to try and initiate her plan of repairing the train and heading to Canterlot. She watched and listened outside for Fluttershy or any other infected before we stepped out of the cottage. I noticed Sweetie and Applebloom's bodies were gone, meaning they were more likely eaten. At first, we silently waited for a few feet, going at slow pace. When Rarity suddenly hushed us, do you hear that? There was laughter in the distance, but nothing like normal laughter. Like you'd hear at a party, it sounded sinister, broken, and dead. Pinky, without saying a word, shoved us forward into a sprint. The laughter started following us. Is that Derpy? Pinky scooped Scootaloo on her back since she couldn't run as fast as us. She must have gotten a look at what was behind us because she shrieked horrifically. This caught the attention of other infected as we were starting to be chased by half of Ponyville. Don't stop until we get to the station, yelled Pinky. Our lungs were burning by the time the abandoned train came into view. The train was luckily in a better state than I expected. Blood splattered, trailed inside the cars. However, presumably from previous passengers. But otherwise, it seemed in perfect condition. We ran inside and ducked under the seats. AJ stopped to pull the door shut. The door slammed loudly right as a smiling pony ran straight into it with a loud crack. Immediately, Pinky and AJ were at the engine to try and get the train running. Rarity held Scootaloo close as infected ponies started ramming themselves into the train. The car rocked with every violent shove, sounds of groaning and giggling emitting from outside. Suddenly a mangled hoof shattered the thick glass of the train car, covered in blood and glass, but still desperately trying to get in. I was panicking. Have you guys figured it out yet? Trying to, just hang on, we almost got it. More glass shattered around us, horrific and stretched forces. Her faces of our friends peering outside. Scootaloo screamed and we tried to move away from them. Then we started moving. 
the train slowly chugging before taking off at a rapid speed. The infected ponies struggled to hang on before falling out. Miles away from us, I sighed in relief. I'm still unsure on how they managed to start the train. AJ tried to explain it to me, but honestly I zoned out after the word ignition. Finally, we got out of that town. I hope we never have to see those things again. Though I feel guilty for leaving our friends behind, I hope we can still save them. Oh my god. Now we got uh, stages of the cookie virus here. I'm going to read this. Since TikTok hasn't been banned, new uploads will continue to be posted on TikTok. However, the threat of a ban still exists, so if TikTok were to be banned, I will post entries on Insta. The reason uploads have been halted is because I got burnt out. I'm taking a short break from updating this AU, but I will get back to it soon. Feel free to ask any questions. Thank you for your patience. So it's nice to know the creator still cares about the story, and they still want to work on it. They're just a little burnt out, which makes sense. It's fine. That's a cat. Moving on. All right. Rainbow Dash's journal. Surviving the cookie virus. Part 7. Trigger warning. Scary imagery and faces. Oh, boy. The trip to Canterlot would be a long one. Three hours at the least. For a while, we took the time to calm down. Moving up to the engine while Pinky conducted because the wind blowing through the broken windows was hurting our ears. We were pretty cramped, but I'm glad we were all together. Sorry, the music started to distract me a little. I had to turn that off. After a little too much silence, Scootaloo spoke up. We're going to save every pony, right? Even Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle? Everyone fell into a tense silence at that. Poor Scootaloo. I'm sure she's still in denial about her friends being... Well, Rarity ended up being brave enough to respond. How about we talk about something else, Scootaloo, to uh, lighten the mood? Okay, Pinky, how did you get those scars? I chuckled, while Applejack gasped. Scootaloo, that's not polite. Pinky seemed to giggle as well. No, no, it's okay. I'm surprised it didn't come up sooner. It's not a very nice story, though. Is that okay, Rarity? Rarity said she was okay with it. I knew she just wanted to talk about anything other than Sweetie Belle. Well, when things started to go berserk and you all went missing, I decided to start taking ponies into Fluttershy's cottage to avoid the infected. But once ponies got a good look at my mouth, they were also afraid of me. They just run away. It's eventually, Lyra Heartstrings agreed to bunker with me. I'm not sure you all know her. She was one of Twilight's old Canterlot friends. Everyone seemed to tense at Twilight's name, so Pinky quickly continued. Anyway, I fed her and gave her some blankets to keep warm. I could tell she was troubled, and she told me it's because her girlfriend, Bonbon, bon, had become infected with the cookies. She apparently watched her mutate into a monster. Really sad thing to happen. That night when I had fallen asleep, Lyra must have found an axe with some of my stored weapons. While I was sleeping, she attempted to kill me, slashing the axe across my face. I don't really know why she did it but I'm sure she was still afraid and heartbroken for Bon Bon and thought I was infected, so I don't really blame her for what she did. After that, she ran off and I never saw her again. I was shocked. We all were. We sat there staring at Pinky, expecting her to continue. When she didn't, Applejack spoke up. How did you survive an attack like that? I don't know. It hurt as much as it should, like my face was being cut open, but after a few minutes, the pain went away. Do you think you got some kind of super healing powers from the cookies? Pinky shrugged and said she didn't know for sure, but that seemed to be the only logical explanation. Then Scootaloo approached Pinky and pulled her back her mane and exposed giant teeth marks on her neck. Well, what about this scar? I'm not talking about that scar. Uh-oh. Pinky pushed Scootaloo away and immediately turned around to look ahead. Scoot was in my arms in an instant, nuzzling her face into my coat. I glared at Pinky despite her not facing us. Scootaloo sniffled, which must have caught Pinky's attention. I'm sorry, Scootaloo. That one's a sad story. Well, can I make it a happy story? Pinky was surprised by this. I could tell, but she agreed. Well, after Lyra attacked Pinky, Lyra apologized. She was sorry for what she did and wanted to make it up to her. So Lyra pulled out a little puppy dog for Pinky. Pinky was very happy to have a new puppy friend. So Pinky and Lyra played with the puppy all night until Pinky felt better. The puppy got too playful and a bit Pinky on accident, but in a puppy voice, apologized and licked it better. The end. So 
That's that's pretty wholesome. That's pretty cute. This clearly made Pinky very happy. She thanks Scootaloo for the story, and wait, there's something on the train tracks. Oh, Jesus. Is that Twilight? Thank you for enjoying my stuff. I know only eight of you are going to read this, but the stuff is a lot of fun to make. Unfortunately, updates will be posted less and less frequently, as I am one person who also has a job in college. But that doesn't mean the series is over. I also make no money from this, so if you'd like to support me, feel free to commission me or donate to my Kofi. Commission info and Kofi are linked in my Twitter. See you guys in the next one. All right, so is there any more episodes after this? I don't think so. No, that's it. That's it so far. The last episode was uploaded on um, April 5th. So I don't think it's going to be worked on for two. I don't think it's going to be worked on a lot in the future. But is if it does keep getting worked on, I'd love to make more videos on it. And I'm sorry if I stuttered or like messed up my reading at all through this video. I have a really dry mouth today. I don't know why, but my mouth is so dry. I literally chugged two bottles of water and my mouth is dry as shit. And I don't know why. So it got a little difficult to read from time to time, but I pushed through and I survived and I'll be fine. But overall, this is a really, really good story. Like the story is so good and there's quite a few twists and turns to it. I feel really bad for Scootaloo for losing her friends. I'd say the most traumatic thing I've seen from this was Apple Bloom's death. Because that discovered, that basically showed the main characters, the survivors, that frowning ponies of the cookie virus can imitate the, the sounds of their victims. And when Apple Bloom realized that, it was already too late. She was dead as shit. Absolutely sad. But it looks like if it does continue, things will improve. And I do hope to see more from this in the future. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Dislike if you didn't. It's completely okay either way. And I will link this in the description in case you guys want to check it out for yourself. So this was The Cookie Virus. And I hope you all enjoyed. So thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace. Fuck on life, I can't even make you perfect time